Hello friends. Welcome to Thinker Views podcasts where we share our book reviews with you. Author Roshni Choksi has created a niche for herself with her multiple series of works targeted at young adults featuring characters reminiscent of fairy tales from all around the world. As part of the Rick Riordan present She has been writing the Pandava series that follows the journey of young heroines as they traverse the magical other world and its expectations from the 12 year olds who have been recognized as the modern day warriors for the side of the devas. We have reviewed the first two books of this series at Thinkerviews platforms called Arusha in the End of Time and Arusha in the song of death continuing our reading journey of the pandava series we are now sharing the review for the third installment called aru shah and the tree of wishes let us take a look at the cover page of this book now the series that we have been reading carries on on a similar theme throughout all the four books and along those lines the cover page for this book appears to be fun filled and energetic at first glance it uses the same theme used by other books and the dominant color for background is dark green here the green color makes it resemble and reminding of a tree You can also notice the falling leaves around the illustration of the protagonist on the cover. So all in all, this will be an eye-catching cover page for the browsers looking for the next installment of the series. The storyline goes something like this. The young Pandavas are on a mission to save a clairvoyant who is about to share a prophecy about the war with the world and whichever side hears the prophecy may just win the war the clairvoyant is hiding in a giant ferris wheel and aru mini rin and aiden must defeat the demons that are here to hear the prophecy for the other side the mission doesn't exactly go as planned in both sides here the prophecy on the plus side the clairvoyant is one of the 10 year old twin sisters sheila and nikita who are the remaining pandava sisters although too young to join the fighting yet on the minus side the council of guardians pretty much grants the sisters from any further activities while they go in damage control mode But Aru and her sisters have different plans. As they decipher the prophecy to mean that they must find the Kalpavriksha, the tree that grants wishes, and only if they could make a wish to win, everything will turn out okay. But the tree in the heavens is not the right one. So the clandestine mission to find the Kalpavriksha starts. Their first stop has to be the crypt of eclipses where they are supposed to find the clue to the whereabouts of the tree and so they need help of prince rudra aka rudi who gains them access to the house of mans they do get to the crypt only to find a wooden bird that has lost its voice a bargain with the guardians of the crypt takes them to a hillside where they meet garuda king of the birds and also find that the lost voice of the bird will bring back lost memories memories of the sleeper as aru would discover that her father undertook the same journey at one time and gave up precious memories trying to find a way to defeat his destiny As Aru's emotional struggle intensifies as the Pandavas fight their way to their destination only to find that the sleeper in his army of shadows is already there 
What will Aru do to save the other worlds? Let me now share my thoughts on the book. Just as the first two books, the patchwork of mythological characters and stories continues in this segment as well. It is good to see the now 14-year-old Aru, Mini, Bryn and Aiden to be sharing missions with confidence and camaraderie. They now know each other's strengths and weaknesses and are able to share laughter, victories and defeats together. The following lines from their mentor sum up quite nicely how each of them behaves on a mission. Aru, no dawdling at any point in time and throwing of mission timing. Mini, no lecturing about all the opportunities for fatality and thus ruining group morale. Bryn, no picking fights with things that randomly offend you. And then we have the clairvoyant and the fashionista, Sheila and Nikita, bringing back the elements of longing for lost family and need for familiar affection and sense of belonging. This book still reminds us of the insecurities that everyone battles with as they try to make sense of their place in the world. For Aru especially, this book is a reminder of a journey of a father who wanted to be present in her life and was willing to make sacrifices to allow him to be with his family. What then went so wrong in his journey that he ended up trapped for 12 years? Aru is faced with similar choices in this journey. When they first started their Pandava training, the world seemed clear, their path seemed clear. Devas were the good side, the sleeper was the enemy, and the Pandavas must fight on the side of the Devas to save the other worlds. But as time passes and they learn of the stories of the past, Aru does wonder now whether they know the whole truth. More than anything, she wanted the world to be uncomplicated for right and wrong to be easily divided. But sometimes, right and wrong was nothing more than a frame held up to the eye, the view always changing depending upon who held it. In spite of the above, the book is just as entertaining and filled with humor as the rest of the series. The author continues to give us filmy, snappy dialogues or creates funny situations with the character of a rich, magical prince trying to understand the human world and yet showing off the typical quirks of the rich. There, there, rich prince. I'm sorry, there are other rich people in the world. Rudy sniffed. It's hard. It does, however, get a bit repetitive occasionally. To see ancient myths and legendary characters showed on a modernistic stage, for example, how Garud is staged on a pro wrestling type scene. Some stories are repeated neatly though, like Yudhishthira's story about bringing back his brothers from death by answering questions. Here it becomes Mini taking the questions of Yamuna and recovering her sisters. Here is a sample of the questions. What is the heaviest weight to carry? Guilt. What is the greatest wonder? I know a thousand ways a person can die, but that doesn't make me want to live any less. While Aru has dependable sisters now, she still finds herself to be the focus of situations and I liked how she makes the most of being a demigod. She loved how magic made her feel small, not like she was insignificant, but like the world was so much vaster and more colorful than she could ever imagine, like she belonged to something greater than herself. 
Magic can't solve the life problems. And while it sounds amazing to find a tree that could grant any wish, and then it could solve all their problems in an instant, the truth is not so straightforward. Any such wish will carry its cost and its consequences. The author ends this book with introduction of another character and so we can look forward to the next adventure that will continue the journey of Aru and her soul sisters. In summary, this is an enjoyable segment in the series featuring young, adventurous and courageous soul sisters trying to figure out where they should be heading. Think Review's rating for the series remains at around 7.5 stars out of 10. Please do let us know via comments if you have read this series and did you enjoy it? Are there any other series that you have read and enjoyed and would like us to read and share our views with our other readers? Please subscribe to the channel or hit the like button if you are enjoying listening to our reviews. And until the next time, thank you for listening.